So are you a fresh college graduate or a graduate of a coding bootcamp or even a seasoned IT professional looking to break into cloud computing or perhaps land a cloud computing entry level position? Well then, this video is for you. Hi, uh, my name is Faisal. Uh, welcome to 60 Seconds to Code. I have been in the IT industry for about, uh, I'm gonna say 15 to 16 years. And uh, I have been an architect, a developer. I've held many roles, including architect, developer, trainer, business analyst, even systems administrator. Um, so I've been doing this a very long time. And I am currently in the process of uh, doing a cloud migration I've been working on AWS for, I'm gonna say roughly about three to four years now. And uh, I am currently in the process of doing a cloud migration from an on-premises data center to AWS. Um, recently, one of my cousins incidentally called me and he said uh, he, was a, he was a fresh cloud graduate and he said that he wanted to get an entry level position in IT specifically related to cloud computing. and. He said that uh, since I had the experience, I he was looking for some advice. And before I got on a phone call with him, I really started to think about it. Um, like what really is an entry level cloud computing position? What does that mean even? And that's what this video is gonna be about. What is an entry level cloud computing position and how you can go about getting one. So as you know, uh, most uh, traditional IT jobs usually involve uh, especially when you're coming out of college, usually involve some of these uh, uh, some of these uh, titles that you see on your screen. Job titles include uh, beginning uh, entry level DBA, project manager, business analyst, help desk support. Um, you can get junior developer positions, maybe a .NET developer, start Python developer, for starting out as a JavaScript developer, etc. But really, when you think about it, what is a cloud entry level position. And that's a little bit harder to define, isn't it? The reason it's harder to define is because well, cloud really is a paradigm shift in computing. It's not just a single technology because DBAs worked in the cloud, project managers work in the cloud, developers work in the cloud, help desk personnel work in the cloud, everybody works in the cloud. Basically, cloud is a paradigm shift in information technology. So is there really a single entry level position for the cloud, well, I don't think so. I don't think there is. But if you're looking to break into the cloud computing space, especially if you're fresh out of college, or even if you're a seasoned professional, I'm, I've put together uh, uh, some tips for you on how to break into the cloud industry, or specifically into, into the IT industry related to cloud computing. So let's get going. Your very first job, especially related to cloud computing, if you want to get experience, okay? And the thing is, if you already have experience in information technologies, if you are a seasoned IT professional already, you are way ahead of the game because you already have experience in IT and you are probably in an organization that is either in the process of doing a cloud project or doing a cloud migration or at least Pretty much every company that I know of is at least thinking about doing a cloud migration or a cloud project sometime soon. So if you're a seasoned IT professional, you are ahead of the game. And the way to get experience or the way to get breaking or the way to break into cloud computing is to basically ask. Ask to work on and to get on cross-functional teams within your organization and see if you can get some experience that way. It turns out that good things happen to those who ask. So your first job as, uh, is to gain experience. And if you are already a seasoned professional, you do have um, a leg up in it that you can ask to work in a cross-functional team. If you are a help desk professional, you can ask to work in a cross-functional team, but that's how you can start to get in, gain exposure. However, if you're fresh out of college or even if you are a graduate of a coding bootcamp, this is when it gets a little bit tougher to gain experience. And here are some pointers specifically for you. Number one, volunteer. If you have a, let's say, religious organization that you are a part of or you're a member of or you do some uh, thing on the side. So, for example, if you run a uh, book club, 
a friend of mine, as when he got his first break in information technology, his very first experience wasn't actually a job. He actually volunteered to create a web page for a tennis club that he used to run and not run, but he was a member of. And he created the tennis club website. He uh, created the HTML page, posted a bunch of pictures, and that was his first experience. And that's how he broke into information technology. So go ahead and volunteer. You have a, you run a book club. You are a member of a religious organization. Go ahead, check out the website of that organization and see if it could need some improvement. And if it can, go ahead and implement that website in the cloud. Now, me specifically, I have uh, most experience with AWS. I do have a little bit of experience with Azure and Google, but mo my, my three certifications are actually in AWS. So if I was to build a, you know, my local uh, religious organization's website, I would probably use AWS S3 static hosting, host it there and deploy it and list that as a volunteer experience. Notice that there is nothing wrong with doing that. That is real, true experience. By doing that, you will have exposure. Number one, you will know the AWS cloud. Number two, you will no longer be afraid of the console. Number three, you will know the ins and out of S3, how to do S3 static site hosting, how to host a website on there, how to connect a domain name to the website, etc. All of those things will be in your experience. And now you can use that and put that as an experience on your LinkedIn profile or and on your resume. And notice there's nothing wrong with that. You're not even, you're not lying. You're not even exaggerating, not even a little bit. That's real, true experience. So go ahead, be creative. Um, you, you've heard some suggestions. Go ahead, volunteer, and see if you can gain experience that way. Number two, if you're a developer already, or if you're in the IT industry, a lot of people have passion projects or side projects that they have. Some people like to develop uh, apps on the side. Some people, you know, do uh, website work, or some people even do freelance freelance work. Go ahead and try to integrate some cloud stuff into your passion projects, in the sense that if you have a need for, um, like, I don't know, either compute compute or you need to create a web service, why not host that in the Google Cloud or Azure Cloud or a particular web service in the AWS Cloud and basically integrate that into your passion project. That web service that you are gonna write and put it you know, in some data center or somewhere, why don't you just uh, and try to integrate that or some other piece into your passion project, the cloud piece into your passion project and list that as an experience, that's perfectly acceptable. And if you yourself are either running a website, for example, I write my own blog, and why not migrate your own WordPress blog, or if you run a website, or if you have a company website, for example, if you're already working for a company, why not migrate that website or that blog to um, either the cloud provider of your choice? In my case, I did a, I migrated my company's website uh, from uh, the GoDaddy to AWS. Hosting. So why not do that? And that is a great way of creating and listing experience. So step one, gain experience. You have, you're going to have to be a little bit creative if you're coming out of college. But if you are a seasoned IT pro, uh, working in cross-functional team is a great way uh, to do that. But here are some creative suggestions for you to gain some IT experience. Number two, get certified. Now, what you will notice a thread running through this entire video is that you are going to take this step by step. First step, you're going to gain some experience. Second step and second evidence of the fact that you are able to do a good job is that you want to get certified. There are multiple AWS certifications. The three certifications that I recommend, especially for beginners, are AWS Cloud Practitioner. Um, by the way, obviously, because of uh, my experiences in AWS, I'm going to recommend AWS. Well, I'm sure Azure and Google Cloud have some beginner certifications, but the AWS Cloud Practitioner certification is a beginner certification. That's, that certification is extremely easy to get. You can get that certification and that will prove a multiple things to a potential employer. Number one, you are not afraid of testing and you are willing to take a test and you're able to pass a test. That's what it indicates to a potential employer. And number two, it's a valid legitimate credential that you can put in on your LinkedIn profile. And you can say that you are AWS certified. That's perfectly within the bounds of reasonableness. You're not exaggerating even a little bit 
by getting an AWS Cloud Practitioner certification, you can say, yes, I'm AWS certified. The architect and the developer associate level certifications are a little bit tougher, especially for beginners. I wouldn't recommend that right off the bat, but I would at least ask you to uh, get the AWS Cloud Practitioner certification. Notice that we are slowly building on your profile, on your resume. You got yourself a little bit of experience either in working on a cross-functional team, volunteering, creating a passion project, or migrating a blog, or migrating a website. Step two, get yourself certified. At the very least, in AWS Cloud, as an AWS Cloud Practitioner, um, or AWS Architect, AWS Associate Architect, or an AWS Developer Associate. Uh, I'm gonna provide you some link in the description below for some articles I wrote on how to pass those certification exams. Step three. Get educated. Education doesn't just involve sitting down a lot of undergraduates and uh, perhaps even boot campers who uh, went through some expensive boot camp are thinking, here you go, here's yet another you know, $10,000 or $60,000 that I have to pay in order to get a degree or get, get into a boot camp. No, that's not what I mean here at all. Udemy, Coursera, A Cloud Guru, and a bunch of other training providers, this is what they do. You can take their course and you can, uh, what you can do is after you're done taking their course, you can, uh, once you finish the course, they'll give you a certificate of completion. That certificate of completion is your evidence that you finished their course. And especially Udemy, it's extremely cheap. I mean, it's like $15 for one course. That's like nothing. So why not take uh, either an associate level course or an architect level course, even if you're not certified, you can use this as evidence that you are getting educated or you are educated in AWS. So go ahead, register for a course on either Udemy, Coursera, Cloud Guru, or any other training provider and get yourself one or at multiple uh, certificates of completion. These certificates of completion are your evidence that you are getting yourself educated in the cloud. And finally, Network, network, network. Number one, uh, go ahead. If you're interested in the AWS cloud, recommend, I would recommend that you join any AWS related LinkedIn groups and start to add any developers, cloud architects, and any people who are working in information technology to your LinkedIn network. You just go to the LinkedIn. The beautiful thing about LinkedIn is you can just go there, type, uh, start typing a job title and just request 10 people every day to join in your LinkedIn network. What this is going to do is you are slowly building evidence. You're slowly building evidence that you are able to do the job. Number one, you have some experience by being a little bit creative. You got yourself some experience in the cloud. Number two, you got yourself certified. Number three, you got yourself educated. And number four, you are now joined on LinkedIn with multiple people, multiple groups who have a, an interest in cloud computing. And finally, it's an overlooked resource, but I've listed it there. Use your alma mater, especially if you are a bootcamp graduate. Most bootcamp, uh, most bootcamps do have a, um, an, uh, what's that called? A, a job finding program or something to that effect. Use them. Um, use the network that you already possess. Start to expand your network and let people know that you are looking for a position. Now, notice that after all of this, if you have a potential employer who is looking to you know who is looking to hire and they see your profile and they see that number one you have one or two experiences doesn't doesn't mean volunteer experience is not experience that's experience you have one or two experiences you have one or more certifications real legitimate credentialed certifications in aws you have multiple certifications not sorry not certifications certificates of completion that you've uh, uh, finished courses that you finished on either Udemy or Coursera or whatever, and you have an active interest. You are taking an active interest in cloud-related groups and cloud-related technologies. You are adding people to your developers group and you know in your in your personal network. What do you think is going to happen? That's the, the all this is going to combine to make a clear, larger picture that you are ready to work in the cloud, and if you're willing to be a little bit negotiable in your salary, most uh, project managers and hiring managers, they're kind of pinched on budgets. They're always pinched on budgets and they're always looking to augment their team with people who are talented. 
So if you're willing to negotiate, be a little bit negotiable in, in your salary and let them know that you know, you, uh, you're you willing to work. And basically this allows the hiring managers, this makes the hiring manager's decision a lot easier. Hey, this guy is has a certification, he has experience, he, he has taken a bunch of courses and he is, has a professional interest in the topic. Maybe he doesn't have as much experience as I would like, but he's coming at a bargain. So you will make yourself a lot more competitive if you were to do, if you weren't to, if you were to not do these things. It would be very difficult for you, for not for you, for a hiring manager or a project manager to overlook your resume at that point because you have positioned yourself that way. So there you go. There you have it. If you are looking to break into cloud computing, number one, gain yourself experience. Uh, if you have to be creative a little bit there, do be creative. I've given you some suggestions already. Go look at those again and definitely get yourself some experience in the cloud. Number two, get yourself some basic beginner certification. If not advanced level certifications such as the architect level, the beginner level certifications, at least the one in AWS, which is the cloud practitioner certification is extremely easy. Get certified. Number three, get educated. And you, it's very easy to get a certificate of completion from a Udemy course or a Coursera course, but that's evidence you are, you know, gaining evidence or mounting evidence that you are able to do the job. And number three, start to show an interest, start to expand your network, join uh, LinkedIn groups, you know, add developers to your network, add IT professionals to your network and start to network and start applying for positions. And by being a little bit negotiable in your, negotiable in your salary, being, being a little bit flexible in your salary demands, you can put yourself in an extremely healthy position to be hired, okay? Because if somebody or a hiring manager or a project manager gets a, a job requirement and they are a little bit stretched thin on their budget and they see a guy, he is very, very seasoned, he has a lot of experience in the cloud and he has 20 years of experience in IT and seven years experience in this and that, and he's but he's costing a bunch. But then they get, come across your resume and you have certifications, education, you have networking and you have experience, it would be very difficult for them to look you over. There you have it, folks. And by the way, if you get a job based on these tips, you owe me coffee. Okay, until next time, see you guys later. Oh, by the way, best of luck on your job search.